Hey everyone, it is Erin Chung and I teach modern real estate agents how to become community influencers so that that way they can generate leads on demand and grow their real estate businesses on autopilot. So today we are talking all about the three best email newsletters that you can send to your list to stay top of mind and to nurture your list. So I'm super excited to come to you and talk to you about this because this is a question that I actually get a lot in all of our Facebook groups and on Instagram and all of that. So I, I wanna cover all of this in detail with you today. And if you have questions, I can go ahead and answer those questions and all that for you today as well. So uh, first and foremost, what I wanna let you know is that before we dive in, if you want to take a deep dive on any of the things that we talk about today, I want to take that deep dive with you. So I have a free masterclass. It's called 100 Real Estate Leads in 90 Days, and it teaches you exactly that. OK, so it's going to teach you how to generate your first or your next 100 real estate leads in the next 90 days. And we focus on how to generate referrals, sales leads, traffic, all of the above. And so if you're interested, and like I said, if you want to take a deep dive, if you like what we're talking about today, just go to 100leadsin90days.com. So once again, that is 100leadsin90days.com. And my team will go ahead and um, put that in the comments for you below so that you have that link as well. Okay, so that's number one. Now, number two, let's go ahead and dive into today's content. So all about email newsletters and the power of email newsletters, okay? So this is a question that I get a lot, okay? Um, my students ask me in the academy, uh, people in my free Facebook group, they're asking me all the time as well. And so I'm like, okay, look, we have to address this question because it's coming up way too much, okay? <laughs> so here's what it is. So typically the story goes a little bit something like this. It's like, hey, Erin, um, I just signed up for Jane Smith's uh, list. She's my local competitor. She's sending out these beautiful, stunning email templates. How do I send something just like that? Because I loved it. It was so beautiful. And I want to do that and send that to my list also. And the short answer is you don't. <laughs> OK, so I would beg to say that Jane, your local competitor who you've signed up on her her list or your cross country referral partner, I would venture to say that she's actually never sat down and taken a cold, hard look at any of her open rates, her click rates, her click through rates, her unsubscribe rates, and all of the above. Like how much, how many of those emails that she's sending or he's sending is actually reaching the intended recipient, okay? So before I started this company, I actually was a freelance real estate marketer. All of you guys know that. And I was like, I kept seeing this over and over and over because it came up, this question came up then too. And I'm like, look, fine. I don't believe it's working, but I will sit down and I will do the data. All of my clients that I had, the one-on-one -on -one clients that I had back then, went through all of their email sequences, all of their open rates, analyzed everything. And nothing, it was like shocking how many emails weren't even hitting the inbox. They weren't even being sent in some cases. Because let me tell you something. You think that when you send an email, it just goes out to the world. That's not the case. These email inbox filters are smart these days. They know what to show you and what to trash before you even see it. And if you're using a genius email subscriber, like a um, service provider like Gmail, it's even worse because Gmail is so smart that whoever is sending the email, if they see that you have a high spam rate or your stuff is getting stuck in the promos, they're going to automatically just not even show it to you and shove it in spam or not allow it to come through at all or shove it in that promo box. And so if you don't know what that promo box is, if you recall, like if you have a personal Gmail account, whenever you get um, those like um, those emails from like Old Navy or Gap or uh, Bath and Body Works, so all of your favorite thing, like your favorite retail stores, and you're like, wait, like I signed up for this list, but I'm not getting it. And there's like that other tab, you know what I'm talking about, where it's like, wait, why is all my stuff in here? Or where's my order? And then you look and you're like, oh, it's in this weird other promo tab. Like, what is this? 
Gmail is smart and the vast majority of people are using Gmail. So you need to think about this, okay? When you're sending out all of your email newsletters, the first step in the process is to actually get into the inbox, okay? Like it seems like it's so simple, but it's actually really not, okay? So the way that you actually get into the recipient's inbox in the first place and not the spam filters or the promo tab or trash is to not trigger the filters in the first place, okay? And one of the things that is the biggest culprit of triggering those filters are those fancy pants emails that you like and you love to look at, okay? That is what's triggering all of the spam filters and the promo filters and the trash filters, okay? So number one, this is gonna sound totally counterintuitive, but stick with me here. Stop using those fancy pants email templates. They don't work okay and they're triggering all kind of filters so you want to make sure that you're not using those send your emails in plain text plain text i know that sounds weird i know it sounds like i'm telling you to do something from like 1991 and i am okay <laughs> like when you notice a lot of you guys are on my email list if you're on my email list you will know i only send plain text emails every once in a while i'll put links or I'll put like one photo, but that's it. I don't use any of those fancy pants templates because I know, and I've done the research, they don't work, okay? So that's number one, send plain text emails, write it like you're writing to a friend, okay? You get all of your friends' emails, you get all of your colleagues' emails, you get all of your team's emails. The reason why is because you're writing one-to-one, -one, plain text as a friend, all right? So that's number one. Get into the inbox, use plain text, stop triggering the spam filters to begin with, all right? Number two has to do with your content. So when you're sending something and you've, you know, you, we just covered how to land, actually land in the inbox, the second step is to actually get opened, read, and clicked, okay? So that's the next step, opened, read, and clicked. Now, again, this seems like, oh, doesn't everyone open my emails? No, do the research, they're not, <laughs> okay? We and my, my team, we are obsessed with our open rates. We know that every time we send something, we spend a lot of time obsessing over the copy, the subject line, all of those things, so that that way you guys are more encouraged to open our emails. We spend a lot of time on this. It seems like it's easy, it's not, okay? So you need to do the same thing. Your content is going to be a big contributing factor of people are when they're continuing to open and uh, read your emails, okay? So how do you write emails that people actually want to open, read, and take action on. The easiest way to do that is to keep in mind W-I-I-F-M, okay? W-I-I-F-M. That stands for what's in it for me, all right? That is the number one rule in marketing, number one rule. If you are putting any marketing pieces out. I don't care if it's email, your open house sign, I don't care if it's a flyer, a Facebook ad, it doesn't matter. If you don't keep the what's in it for me factor high, you're going to get ignored every single time. And so what we do, what my team and I do, is we make sure that everything that we're sending out to you guys has a high what's in it for me factor. Everything we do is for you guys. And we wanna make sure that we're sending out the most valuable content to you guys because otherwise you're not gonna care and you're just gonna ignore everything that I have to say, okay? This Facebook Live that I'm doing right now is for you. I'm doing it because it has a high what's in it for me factor for you guys, right? So think about it with your audience. What do they care about? So now with all of that being said, so far, if you're just joining us, we've covered how to land in the inbox and we've covered how to get opened and read by having a high what's in it for me factor. Now I'm gonna cover the three best emails, all right? So if you have some pen and paper nearby, Take it out, take notes, because this is what we're gonna cover right now. So the three best newsletters. I'm gonna break it down by buyers, sellers, and local residents. The reason why I always include local residents is because a lot of you guys are forgetting that people in your community will eventually buy or sell at some point in time. If they're not ready to make a move right now, they still need to be nurtured, okay? Because they will make a move at some point in time. That's pretty much a fact. So 
Always keep in mind that you need to have local residents, a fresh flow of local residents, cold leads coming into your pipeline as well, because you want to make sure that you're nurturing all those people too. Okay, so buyers, sellers, and local residents. All right, so the three email newsletters. Number one, what do buyers want? Okay, what do buyers want? What is the WIIFM for buyers? Buyers want listings. Okay, buyers want listings. So give them what they want. For the best email newsletter that you can send out for a buyer is listing alerts. All right, listing alerts. You can send it from your MLS. I prefer a tool called Real Scout. I think it's amazing. Not every MLS has Real Scout. My broker happens to pay for it, but I love it. Real Scout is amazing. You can send them listing alerts. You can see, you know, where they're going, like what things they're clicking on. Real Scout is better than Redfin. It's better than Zillow, and a lot of your leads will like it better and they won't go to Zillow and Redfin. They'll come directly to you and your MLS when you use a tool like Real Scout. Okay? So that's number 1. I know that doesn't seem like an email newsletter, but it is. Okay? Buyers want listings. What do sellers want? Sellers want ding, 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 buyers. <laughs> okay. So give them what they want. So buyers want listings, listings, uh, sellers want buyers, right? So what is the best email newsletter for a potential seller? It's going to be an email newsletter that has to do with buyers. And what's that? The best one is going to be a local market update. What has sold? What is their home value? Um, what's going on in the community that is going to affect their home values? Because a seller wants to know that their house is going up in value, that they made a good choice, they made a good investment, and then when they're ready to buy, I mean, when they're ready to sell, that there will be buyers available, okay? That's what every seller wants to know. So that's for sellers, that's number two. Number three is local residents. What do local residents want? Local residents want news. So here's why. Back in the day, everyone would go to the newspaper and we would look up the newspaper and be like, okay, this is the weekly events. These are the movies. Um, these are all the, the construction that's happening on Main Street. And nowadays, no one subscribes to the paper. Like, I don't know anyone personally that has, that still has a subscription to the newspaper. Maybe you do, maybe you know people, maybe you have like a grandpa or a mom or dad or something who still does, but I don't know anyone personally anymore who still subscribes to a new newspaper. The problem is that we still want that information. We just don't want to pay for the paper, right? So that's where as an agent, you have an amazing opportunity to actually step in and fill that gap. OK, so what I teach in all like all of my students is to be, again, community influencers where you step in, you provide that gap. You are basically talking about all of the local news, everything you're as an agent. You should be the digital mayor of your town. You should be the community influencer. You should be the local leader. You should be the go to person for everything, not just real estate. OK. Take the place of a local newspaper and the best newsletter that you can send for local residents is community news. This can be a list of um, events, what's happening in the community, um, anything that you can possibly think of that's that's niche in your community. If your community specializes in like horse properties, for instance, maybe you talk about new construction that's happening or zoning laws or those types of things, whatever is pertinent to your community, that's what you should be talking about. Okay. So let me recap really quickly. So number one, for buyers, you want to send listing alerts. That's the best email newsletter for a buyer. For a seller, it's a monthly market update by community or city, however, you know, your markets are the way, however you want to serve your constituents there. Okay. So that's number two. Number three is local residents. And for local residents, that is a weekly update for news. It can be events. It could be zoning laws, changes. It could be, um, what's happening in the park on Thursday concerts. It doesn't matter. Whatever is affecting your community. That is what you should be sending them on a weekly basis. Okay. Now my personal experience, I sent out a weekly list of events and that's actually what I teach in my Academy, a, a list of weekly events. When I skipped a week on those weekly events, I had local residents calling me, asking me, where's the list? I need it. I can't find it. <laughs> like, I need to figure out like what's going on for this weekend. I, you know, my grandchildren are in town. I need to figure out like where to take them. Like it was insane. And as a real estate agent, 
to have people who are local residents calling you uninhibited is like the best possible situation because you can build a relationship even over the phone and then you have a phone number for that person in addition to an email address. Like it's so amazing how you can nurture all of your leads during this whole entire process. Okay. So keep that in mind. All right. I teach the long game. I don't teach tips and tricks and tactics, silver bullets. I teach how to build relationships with your community at scale. So that way, when it's time for them to buy and sell, they only think of you. You don't need to go on listing appointments. You don't need to do the whole dog and pony show. You don't need to do any of that stuff because you're going to get the lead before you even get the call. Okay. I teach you how to start your listing appointment six months ago. (laughs) Okay. So when they call, they just know you're the one I want. Come over to my house. We're selling. That's it. Okay. That's what I teach. So if you, let me back it up. The bad news is that those fancy pants emails, new letters, newsletters just don't work. Okay. We've covered that. But the good news is that you don't even need them. You don't need them. Okay. That's the great news. You don't need them. If you want to stay top of mind and if you want to nurture your leads, just do the ones that I sent you and you're going to be fine. Okay. Again, if you're in my academy, all of this is covered in stage five, all of it. If you're not in my academy, it's okay. I still have a free resource for you where you can go ahead and start this entire journey. Okay. So I have a community influencer marketing plan. And if you want that plan, just go to communityinfluencerplan.com. Okay. So if you're in my academy, stage five. If you're not in my academy, no problem. Just go to communityinfluencerplan.com. That plan is straight out of the academy and I'm just going to give it to you because you're here and I like you. Okay, (laughs) so that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to take a few questions. And before I do that, I just want to let you guys know, thank you so much for joining me. If I go live once a week on Facebook, it gets posted to YouTube, Instagram, pretty much everywhere. I have a podcast. It goes on the podcast. It goes everywhere. So if you're listening on the podcast, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and click subscribe and um, review and like it, comment, whatever you need. And um, let me go ahead and take some questions before I sign off. So I I think there's quite a few of you guys here asking questions. So um, first and foremost, okay, so Stacy, Stacy says, um, this is good because I was totally going to ask this question. Yes. Okay. And so Stacy is, she's in the Academy. Like we cover this Stacy. If you are, um, want more information about this, just go to stage five and it's all covered right there for you. Okay. So I got you covered on that. Phil, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Hey, Felicia. Thank you for joining me. Um, Jessica, Gwen, of course, Gwen loves yellow. <laughs> um, Yolanda, Awesome. You're welcome. Dimitri, (laughs) Doreen, pay attention, woman. This is your department. Yes. Okay. So Dimitri, thank you. I love when Dimitri joins me on lives because he's always has something to say. I love it. Um, Liz. Okay. So Liz says, is there a newsletter template or service you recommend? Does it follow up like follow up boss, have a newsletter feature? Can we add also bomb bomb? Yes. Okay. So Liz, this is a great, great question. So I love, um, my two favorite CRMs are follow-up boss and lion desk. And that's because they integrate and they automate. If your CRM does not integrate and automate, it's junk, it's old. <laughs> so don't even consider it, okay? So yeah, follow-up boss is my favorite. Lion desk is the most inexpensive option. Um, that would be my second favorite. And yes, you can send all kinds of newsletters with both of those platforms. Um, and you can also incorporate BombBomb too. I have never actually used BombBomb myself, but I've worked with a lot of clients, real estate agent clients who have used it and they swear by it. They love it. So, um, I'm pretty sure that that's going to be an option too. And as far as like buyer, um, like listing alerts, that would be from your MLS or from a tool like Real Scout. Okay. Everything else though can be sent from MailChimp. That's probably the best one for local residents. And then the one for um, your your seller leads would probably be Follow Up Boss or Lion's Desk. Um, let's see. <laughs> yes, templates are bad. Gotcha. Phil, um, no HTML emails. Yeah, so Phil, exactly, right? So I don't include a lot of HTML in any of my emails. The only thing would be like a link or maybe a photo. That's it. Okay. So I wouldn't recommend doing anything beyond that because you're going to trigger all kinds of filters and it's not even going to get to your intended recipient. It's not worth it. Uh, Divya, what about constant contact? I've heard they bypass those filters. 
they're lying to you. No one can bypass the filters because they're not in charge of it. <laughs> Only Gmail or Yahoo or Hotmail or heaven forbid AOL. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if they have spam filters at this point because um, they're so old. But no, they're lying to you. They, you. It's impossible. They don't control that. They don't control Gmail's algorithm. So there's no way that that's even, how could they even claim that? That's crazy. But the answer is no. Um, Phil, do you use link shorteners? Yes, Phil, I do use link shorteners. Um, I recommend Bitly, B-I-T-L-Y, or um, you can use a tool like Rebrandly. We just started using that. I like it a lot so far. So yeah, link shorteners are perfectly fine. Jocelyn says, if I'm sending via Gmail, is there a way to see open and click-through rates? Yeah, okay, so first and foremost, Jocelyn, like if you're sending emails in mass through Gmail, that's actually against the law. <laughs> I would stop doing that right away. Um, there's lots of, of like international laws against that. You're not the only one. I have this conversation a lot with agents too. You actually can't do that, okay? So make sure that you're using something like um, a MailChimp or Follow Up Boss or Lion's Desk because you can't do that. You have to give people a way to unsubscribe by law. You have to, um, there's a whole bunch of rules and stuff like that. So yeah, make sure you sign up with an email service provider so that that way you're good to go, okay? Um, Carla, Carla says, what would be the best subject line to use? Carla, we actually test tons of subject lines. We don't just, um, I would say, okay, so let me just, I have like 10 years of experience writing subject lines. So it comes easier the more practice you use, but oftentimes like questions will work. Um, lists of things like the subject line for this email will be three best email newsletter templates to nurture your leads. Um, those work really well. So if you, <clears throat> if you have trouble with that, start off with lists or questions, okay? And then again, as you start to become more comfortable with it, it's gonna be easier for you, and you'll start to see when you look at your open rates like what's getting open and what's not, okay? And you'll, you'll just get better and better and better over time. Um, let's take a couple more questions. Um, yes, Liz, what's in it for me? W-I-I-F-M. Every single marketing piece needs to have for, have that um, as part of it, a big part of it. Offer freebies to get them to click, Morgan says. Yeah, you can offer freebies. Um, we do freebies all the time. Like the, what I just said before, communityinfluencerplan.com, that's a freebie. And you can get on my email list by going to that exact plan. And that's exactly what we're doing. So freebies work great for, for that. I recommend it. I teach it in my academy. And yes, I would absolutely make sure that you're doing that. Um, Anne says, love you, Erin. <laughs> Have to leave replay. Yes. Okay. So Anne, thank you so much. First of all, um, replay, you can always come back to the replay right here. Just click the link, um, in the, if you got a message from me, just go ahead and click the link and you can watch it over again. Once I'm done with the live, you can always watch the replay at any point in time right here. Okay. Um, Ashley says, I appreciate it. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate you. Um, yes, Liz, absolutely. You can watch the replay anytime you want. Um, Lakisa, how do you say that? Laki, Lakalisa? That's so cool. I want to know how to say your name. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so Megan says we have next door in our area. So a recap of next door? Yeah, you could. Um, I wouldn't, some of the next door gets a little gossipy and weird and slimy and gross, <laughs> but um, as long as it's helpful, yeah, like keep it positive, keep it light, keep it helpful. That's a great, great resource. Yeah. Um, if you want to pull and research from next door, that's, that's, you can absolutely do that. Um, April says again, content contacts, a good tool. Uh, I, it's good for most business owners, but I honestly prefer a real estate specific one, like follow up boss and lion's desk, or, uh, alternatively like a MailChimp for instance. Okay. Uh, constant contact is, is equal to MailChimp, but yeah, it's your, it's your choice on that one. But if it's for seller and buyer leads, I want to probably use follow up boss or line desk. Um, April says, what is the best method for finding out about events in the area? You can go to your newspaper online. You can go to Gmail. You can go to Facebook events. You can go to Eventbrite. Like, um, we have like a list of, I think like 20 different places. If you're in the Academy, we have a list of 20 different places to source events. So if you go, if you're in the Academy, just go to the resource library and it's right there for you. If you're not in the Academy, again, you can use, um, just the ones off the top of my head, Google, 
events, Facebook events, Eventbrite, um, the list goes on and on. Just Google it in your local area. You'll be able to find it right away. Um, Ashley says gold. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you. Um, Stacy, again, I know you're in the academy. Go to the resource library. And in the resource library, you'll find a list of events of all the best places to source it. We got you covered on that one. So go ahead and look there. Um, yep, exactly. Facebook events, local newspaper. A lot of the newspapers still have um they still have like an online version of events so that you can basically compile it there and then send that out to your list as well. That's a great, great resource. Um, <laughs> Stacy says, I haven't gotten to stage five yet. Keep plugging away, Stacy. You're going to be there. Almost there. Best real estate training ever. Thank you so much, Stacy. I really appreciate you. Um, and I appreciate you being part of the Academy. Alexa or Alexana. Good stuff. Thank you. Carla. Thank you so much for the reminder. This was great. I'm a member, but not have reached stage five yet. And now I'm still looking forward to it. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Um, okay. So how do we get it, an email address for the neighborhood? So um, Jatender, I think I'm almost positive you're a member. I think you are. Um, basically, we cover all of that. So basically in stage three, it's all about lead capture. And in, in stage three, I teach you how to actually get all of those email addresses. And we set everything up for you, all of your landing pages, all of that stuff. So that, that way, if you're running ads or if you're promoting things on your Facebook page, Instagram, wherever, you can collect tons and tons of leads. So all of that's covered in stage three. And then advertising is covered in stage four. Okay, so revisit those and then go back to stage five. And I'll show you how to do the email to nurture them in stage five. Um, yes, Alicia, looking forward to stage five. Yes, you're going to love it. And then, OK, so Maddie says, what if our team wants to email direct email newsletters for their clients to retain their business? So again, with direct, if it's promotional in nature, so if you're a business and you're emailing someone, you're not allowed to do that. Um, if you're emailing your client like, hey, see you at the property at you know 5 p.m., that's totally different. But if it's a promotional email, you it's actually illegal for you to send emails in mass that way. Um, unless you're sending them one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine. But if you're sending them in mass, you have to have a, a tool that allows them to, um, allows you to comply with all of the international laws and also to be able to unsubscribe. So um, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Hey, LaDonna, I'm so glad you're here. So um, Amanda says, I'm so happy I tuned in. I was trying to figure out MailChimp. I used it for my last contest alert and many of my contacts didn't receive my email. Yes, exactly. I wrote a text email and received back 10 emails. Exactly. So Amanda has the exact experience that I'm talking about. This is just proof. Like when you send out the emails in mass that are like the fancy pants templates, they just, they get stuck. They get stuck. And so in order to avoid that, always write the plain text ones. You're going to get far more response on that. So I, Amanda, that's exactly been my experience as well, which is why I decided to do this Facebook Live for you guys. Um, Heather says, love the newsletter ideas. I'm so glad you were able to join, Heather. Thank you. Um... Megan says, I just got into real estate. I need to sell something <laughs> so I can get into your academy. Yes. Um, after your first sale, please come and, and reach out to us because we'd love to have you in the academy. Um, in the meantime, just get on the wait list, okay? Phil says, do link shorteners have an effect on being tagged as spam? Phil, I would say if the link itself is spammy, yes, because I don't, don't quote me on this, but based on my research, I have a very strong suspicion that email that Gmail can actually like click the links and look at your landing pages. I know Facebook can do it. Everyone knows Facebook does it. So like when you're running a Facebook ad, Facebook goes to every single one of your landing pages, looks at your landing page, and then decides if it's spam, and then will come back to Facebook and be like, nope, we're not running your ad. I am positive. I have like I'm like 99% sure that Gmail has the same ability. So as long as your landing pages are not spammy, you should be good to go. But if you're sending spam, then Gmail is going to go out there, look at your landing pages, see that you're a spammer and be like, no, we're done here. So that's how you end up like in the trash. But I don't think you're doing that, Phil. So, um, OK, so Amanda, Amanda says what to send and how often has been my biggest stress and time consumer. Yes. 
So what to send and how often, um, we've covered that in this Facebook Live, Amanda. So um, you can always come back here and watch the replay at any time. If you're a member of the Academy, I tell you what to send. <laughs> you don't have to think about it. So um, let's see. So Francie says, when you say community, how specific should the focus be? Towns, surrounding towns, county? Francie, it's totally up to you. What I would recommend doing is going to your local title rep and seeing how big your community should be, okay? Because a community could be a couple of blocks in downtown in like in New York where, you know, you may have like hundreds of residents on one block. Or if you live in a rural town, one block could be like one person, okay? So go to your title rep and see what is the density of the population and see if it can support you. If you want to be the local agent, like the community influencer over your gated community, go to your title rep, see if the turnover rates and um, the amount of homes that are in there can actually support that. And that's that's the first step that I would take, okay? Um, I'm gonna answer a couple more questions here. So, hello, <laughs> awesome. Um, Alexana says, I'm new to the program. Very excited to start implementing. Yes, I'm glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. And I'll see you in the Facebook group. <laughs> um, Amanda's in incredible value. Thank you. You're welcome. Kathy says, I would need Real Scout if I created my own site with IDX. Um, you don't need Real Scout if you, IDX is totally different. That's, you can use IDX broker for that. I just love Real Scout. And I think it's an amazing tool, but I just know that they don't connect with every single MLS. Um, if they don't, you can use something like Cloud MLS, I think it is. Um, cloud, they, they're the company that does Cloud CMA. A lot of you guys know Cloud CMA. Um, it just makes your MLS look better, it's nicer, it's cleaner. The reason why your leads are going to Zillow and Redfin is because your MLS is typically outdated, like let's just be honest. Um, and so Real Scout kind of like updates it and makes it better than Redfin and Zillow. And my leads, when I was having like, when I was doing real estate and generating leads and nurturing leads, like they loved it. They loved it way better than Zillow and Redfin. So if you have Real Scout, you're lucky, <laughs> okay? Uh, Don says, I'm part of the Academy and I love, love, love the Academy. Erin is so easy to listen and follow. Highly recommend. Thank you, Don. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Uh, Jason, why is stamp? Mm. Well, okay, so let me back it up. Okay, so why is stamp is good for like one-on-one -on -one emails. Um, so why is stamp is probably fine because typically that's from Gmail. You're just sending an email to one person. So that's fine. That's okay. Um, not a fan of, of HTML and emails, even if it's just like a one-to-one -one thing, but why stamp usually doesn't come from like your MailChimp or your follow-up boss or your your um, line desk. So I think you should be good to go. But again, I'm just not a fan. I don't I don't like those crazy signatures. They look, look so salesy and spammy. And when people scroll down and they see all of that, they're like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, so I just I don't like it. I always sign off every email. If you're on my email list, I sign off. Cheers, Aaron literally on every single email because like I'm writing to you as a person, not as a salesperson. I'm not here to sell you. I'm just here to provide value to you. And if you like what I have to sell, great, bye. But if you don't, I'm still here for you. So like, I just want to make sure that everything that I send is like person to person, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, no HTML. That is blasphemy. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Like it's hard because I know you guys like your HTML, but it's not working. So just give it up. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple more. So Megan says, don't even send emails from your company given email. It depends. Um, like I know, like I'm with KW and we have like the kw.com. Um, it's through Gmail. But again, if you're sending one-on-one, -on -one, that's fine. But you're not allowed to send 10 emails to 10 people on Gmail. Again, that that is illegal. You cannot do that. So if that's your question, then unfortunately, no. Carla says, thank you. You are welcome, Carla. Thank you for joining me. Um, Caitlin says, I'm sending these newsletters to buyers, sellers, and local residents. Yes. Do I split them up into groups or send them all of the newsletters? I'm a fan of grouping because it's a little bit more work. Yes. But I want to speak to people one-on-one. -on -one. I don't want to... That's the other problem, Caitlin, with um, with these like 
fancy pants newsletter templates is like you're blasting everyone and it's not um, the what's in it for me factor isn't there because of the fact that you're treating everyone the same, right? So like I talk to people who um, are not in my academy differently than I talk to people who are in my academy, okay? Likewise for you, you want to talk to sellers differently than you're talking to buyers and differently than just local residents, right? So yes, it's a little bit more work to segment them, but the best marketers on earth segment. They just do, okay? Because how can you have, like, how can it feel like a one-on-one conversation with someone when you're like, hey, sellers, and it's like, then the buyer's going to get it, and they're like, this isn't for me, like, trash. And the more times they trash or click spam, your open rates are going to keep going down and down and down and down and down. So that's the other benefit of segmentation, okay? Um... Jocelyn, so unsubscribe. Is that option needed if you're sending out thank you and follow up emails to open house visitors? Yes, absolutely. So that having an unsubscribe link is probably the number one thing that most people are breaking the law on. <laughs> okay, so you have to have an unsubscribe link. If you do not include that, then that's against the law. There are email laws in place to protect consumers and we have to abide and to comply with them. So yes, you have to do that if you're sending promotional emails. And I know probably to open house people, you're sending them maybe one-on-one sometimes. So maybe you can get away with it. But if you're sending them in mass, they have to be um, from a provider that allows you to have an unsubscribe link. Um, Chrissy says, what if you're sending emails to folks in your database? Doesn't matter. If you're sending them all at once, you have to use a tool like Follow Up Boss or Lion Desk because they will include the unsubscribe link by default. Chris says, yo, Aaron, you rock. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chris. Thank you for being here. Um, ah, Lakeisha. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so if you join me live next time, I will know how to pronounce your name properly. Thank you. Um, Megan says, um, I ran a, con- I run a construction company and an independent and you're an independent agent. She's asking, what if I'm dual branded? Uh, Megan, without knowing your entire business model, um, you're probably just going to need two email service providers, one for your construction people, one for your, um, real estate agent people. Okay. April says, thank you. You're welcome. April, I'm in the Academy. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So yes, it's all covered in the Academy. Just go in there, learn what you need to know, and then you're going to be good to go, April. So that's awesome. Diane says, good information. Thank you. You are welcome. Yolanda says, I need an Aaron Chung CRM. (laughs) When is that coming out? You know, I would love to create a CRM because it's probably my biggest pain point. And um, if I can find a good developer who can do that for us one day, I will gladly pay for that and then pass that on to you guys because I love my emails, like love my emails. And um, yeah, we need it. I agree. Oh my gosh. Hello from Slovakia. Thank you for the information. You speak so quickly, but I got it. I'm sorry. I know I talk fast, especially if you're like not a native English speaker. So sorry. (laughs) Karen says, hello. Hi, Karen. Thank you for being here. Um, Catherine, this is great info. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here too. Heather says, how do you not be spammy? (laughs) Oh, Heather, it's, it's a tough one. Um, provide value to people, speak to them one-on-one, message them like you're talking to a friend. If you wouldn't send it out to your friend, don't send it out to someone who's like a lead, right? So, cause like the thing is, is that whenever we're behind computers, we feel like for whatever reason, we can just all social uh, constructs just go to the wayside and we can just do whatever we want. And that's that's not OK. Um, we need to to respect people's inboxes and we need to respect our leads. And and again, talking to them as if they are a friend one on one, be helpful, be valuable. Don't spam them. They have given you their email addresses. And so we need to be mindful and we need to to make sure that we are protecting that. So. Um, I take it very, very seriously. And again, that's why I don't teach tactics and tricks and all of that stuff. It's ridiculous. Like 
I teach nurturing relationships. And if you want this person to be on your email list for years to come, you need to be respectful of them. So that's how I personally would recommend to not be spammy. Just talk to them as if you were talking to them in person. Just respect them. Okay. Um, Good question, by the way. Felicia, uh, Francie says, thank you. You are welcome. Um, Soul, for people in South America, MLS doesn't work. I don't know, Soul. Um, I know you're in South America because I know that you're um, you're in the academy. However, I don't really know. If you guys don't have an MLS, then yeah, uh, it, it wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, Tamara says, hi, Erin. Thank you. Um, gathering sellers is my goal. I'm not through all of the coursework yet, but what is the quick snatch and grab you can offer? Tamara, I don't teach quick snatch and grabs. <laughs> like, so I don't know. Um, I wouldn't recommend it either. But what I would recommend is if you are in the academy, just go through the steps. I teach you everything you need to know. I know you want it quickly. And I know you want it now because you need leads like yesterday. I get that because everyone is like that. But um, it's not worth it to do like tricks. It's just not. I know a lot of people teach tricks. I don't teach it for a reason because, again, I want you to be in business for one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years plus down the road. And if you do those types of tactics, that's not going to be the case. And people are going to be instantly put off by it. And that's why I don't teach it. Um, Okay, so Karen, um, favorite CRMs is Follow Up Boss, Lion Desk. I like MailChimp. I like ConvertKit. And... Yeah, Real Scout for for listing alerts. Um, Yolanda says, "Is Real Scout open to all agencies?" Yeah, it is. Um, it just depends on if your if your um, MLS connects with it. My broker, KW, they actually provide it free for us. Godsend. I love it. I love it. I cannot speak more highly about Real Scout. Um, I love it so much. So let's see. So is GMAS illegal? Yeah. Okay. So sending. Um, Mass emails, so sending emails to hundreds of people at a time, 10 people at a time, 50 people at a time using Gmail. Yes, that is illegal. (laughs) There's lots of laws that prohibit you from doing that. So Lupita says, great info. I'll be watching the replay several times and absorb it all. You are welcome, Lupita. So Nikki says, I just tuned in. I feel like I missed your jewels of wisdom. Are you going to be recording this one? Yes, Nikki, you can come here anytime after I um, end this live stream. You can come back and watch the replay anytime you want. So you're good to go. Okay. Um, Thank you for being here, by the way. Uh, Yes. Okay. Tamara says, I'm in the academy. I know I need to relax. (laughs) Yes. Yes. You're good. Like, trust me, I have everything you need inside the academy. You are covered. So just take a breather, give yourself some grace and just go through the, the, the lessons. And I promise you'll be good to go. Okay. I promise you. Um, let's see. Okay. So a couple more just, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up here. So Patricia, thank you for all the information. I almost have my new website. Yes. You went through website in a weekend. For those of you guys who need a real estate website, go to realestatewebsiteinaweekend.com and I got you covered. Okay. So Patricia has gone through that. So thank you for making my non-techie self feel much less intimidating. You are welcome. The Academy is awesome. Your voice I need to hear to demystify my business approach. Continued success. Patricia, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And then Tamara says, I'm trying to build a legacy. So we are talking about generational wealth. Yes. Yes. No quick stuff. Love what you're doing. Suggesting you to folks I know. Thank you, Tamara. I appreciate you. I really do. Thank you. Um, so last one, let's take Kaylee and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So how do I put together a good subject line to attract sellers and buyers? So Kaylee, I actually covered this like in a little bit, like in the middle of this Facebook live. So what I would recommend is just making sure that you're practicing, try everything. If you're new to subject lines, write questions, um, write like use words like the best X or 15 ways to X. Um, those ones typically get really good open rates. Do a little bit, bit of research in um, on Google and see which ones are going to be the best ones for you. We test everything. I have like 10 years of experience writing subject lines. So for me, it comes easily. It may not come easily for you, but I promise you, if you get in a habit of continuing to do it, it will come easier over time. I promise you. Okay. So thank you so much for everyone who joined me today. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now. But if you have questions, 
me and my team, we all come here and, and come back and answer all questions like as you guys get them. So if you have continued questions, just go ahead and feel free to ask us and we'll be here. We're here for you guys. Okay. So thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.